Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today is new release day for Ellen Hudson, and I am in love with the submarine. Once in a while, there's a stamp set that I know I'm going to use a lot, and this little one I'm going to use an extraordinary amount because it's so much fun. Look at the octopus and the little, oh my goodness, these two little guys are hilarious. So I am stamping them and I just wanted to show you what my mask looks like when I'm stamping something into the windows. I'm just going to place that right over top, hold that little bottom piece down with a sticky note so I could just hack off a little piece of my masking paper. And then I could stamp my little guys inside the windows. And I created a little like a little, little line for the ground down there at the bottom, but I'm going to paint the background first and show you how to do a cool background like this. The ship itself, the submarine, is going to be dark color, so I'm not really worried about if my color goes over or anything, but I'm going to put water in wherever I want the background color to be. And I can be relatively close in getting my areas filled with water, but it doesn't have to be super close because I'll be able to adjust that as I put color down. But I'm going to put a nice amount of water over the whole thing because I want this nice wash to be over the background. I have it tilted at an angle, so I have a block underneath of my board. That's why it looks a little weird because I want the paint to really drip down the page. A lot of the work I've been doing lately with watercolor, I have my paper nearly vertical because I'm really enjoying what the watercolor does and how it moves. So it's at a relatively good angle here. You can see how quickly it's gonna run down through all of the water down here. A little brush stroke will give it a little guidance as to where I want it to go. There is some water there, but it might tend to sprinkle out into that white area in the middle. And if you're not ready for it to do that yet, you might just you know, take a brush stroke to give it some guidance and let it know where you want it to head out to. So I'm going to drop all the color in here. It's going to collect for a little bit here right at the bottom of the sub, which is, of course, at the top as we're looking at it upside down. And you need to be a little aware of that because if that dries that way, you're going to end up with big, dark blobs down there. And I don't necessarily want that, but it's really wet, so I'm not too concerned right now. I wanted to paint some color around the bubbles. And I want some light area right around that sentiment, and I want everything else to go darker. So I'm going to mix the Indian Throne with a little bit of Payne's Blue Gray to just darken it up. And when I put that dark color up at the top section, that's going to be, of course, the bottom when it's flipped the other direction. And I want that color to slowly get lighter toward the top. But I also want to maintain that little area right around the sentiment that's not going to have a lot of color in it. It's not going to be really rich in color. So I'm just going to drop more color in here. And I have this sped up slightly, but not very much. I'm working really quickly because if any of these areas dry while you're doing it, you could be in trouble. And if you end up with stuff starting to dry, just take a quick, very light spritz of water and just spray over it so that you can maintain that wetness and keep things moving until you're settled with where it's going to be. Now I've got more color down that center section that I want, but I have an idea how I'm going to solve that. So I'm going to go ahead and, while everything's still wet, add more dark color up in the top section, which as I said, will be the bottom, so that I increase the contrast between the top of the card and the bottom of the card. And then I'm going to kind of lighten that section right around my sentiment by spraying it. Now that did end up putting a slight coat of color in the bubble but I figured that, that was worth it because I wanted to be able to gently wash off some of that paint just in that little strip. And you can go back in and work on some of the other stuff. I'm just gonna put some quick strokes in there because that's gonna give me almost a texture in the background that is going to look a, a little bit like water. I've turned it around now, which is gonna help to let gravity pull some of that paint down so that it's not all stuck in blobs. And then I let it air dry. And look at those nice kind of little watery streaks that I got in the, the background. Pretty cool. So I've mixed up some Payne's Blue Gray. And I'm going to paint this ship in the Payne's Blue Gray. The neutral tint is a little on the purple side. And I wanted to keep this more in the monochromatic blues range. So that's why I'm using the Payne's Blue Gray. I just love this color. I love doing entire monochromatic paintings in Payne's Blue Gray. There's just something really nice about it. 
but I'm going to let the lighter color be at the top and the darker color be at the bottom. Now you could, if you wanted, if you enjoyed the last portion of this card, you could paint it upside down and just keep putting your paint at the top to let it drift down to the bottom. When you do it the other way, like I'm going to be doing, you have to be constantly tending and pulling the paint upward. So if you're able to do that, then by all means do. But if you need to turn your paper upside down, then you can certainly accomplish the same kind of a thing that way, which is exactly what we did with the background to put that color at the top part and let it drift downward. In something like this, that's a smaller area, if you turn it upside down, then you do run the risk of a lot of color running to the top section. So if you want your top to remain kind of light, then you'll have to be a little bit careful. But if you turn your board periodically each direction and let gravity pull different ways, you can control exactly how far down that color goes. Now, as it was drying, I was thinking, you know, paints blue gray, all these colors dry to like 30% of what they are when they're wet. So I wanted a lot more color in there. So I just went ahead and went over it and then put some, dropped some thicker paint down in the bottom section. Decided I didn't like that highlight there on the back end of my submarine. And then you'll just add a little bit of dark details in there in the, the top portions. Now I get to work on the rest of the scene, which is just the little corals that I have stamped down here. I stamped them prior to stamping the submarine, by the way. And I'm going to paint them in a light version of the Payne's Blue Gray, trying to decide whether or not I want them to be light or whether I want them to be dark. Because at the bottom of the ocean, it's really dark. Everything down there is going to be really dark. And I was debating whether I wanted to use thicker paint and have a really dark bottom to it or use thinner paint and have more of a gray color. And you can watch as I'm playing with it. I'm trying to decide which way I want to go. I can have little tiny highlights on the tippy tops of some of the, the little pieces of coral down here on the bottom of the ocean. And if you've taken, or if you're interested in taking, the underwater scenes class, I talk a lot about coral and adding some colors to this, but I decided not to opt for colors because I wanted this whole thing to be focused on those eyes. The little squid with his big old eyeballs in there and then the little guy with the little eyeballs. I mean, they're just so hilarious. I just wanted the focus to be on them. And as I was doing all this, I was trying to figure out how that focus is going to be accomplished. Part of it is going to be everything else is in these kind of darkish monochromatic colors. And I'm going to have them be on the brighter side. Now you could make them with warm colors and go with like yellows and things. And I'm going to not do quite that much, but you'll see, uh, I'm going to pick some brighter colors in there. I did decide to add a little bit of a brighter blue down there to the bottom. Didn't help very much once it was dry. As you can see, it dried on the, the grayish side, which is just fine. I liked how it came out with uh, the same kind of a tonality as the submarine itself. Not too bad. And I used some cobalt teal blue for the stuff inside of the submarine and just dropped in some of the other color that I just had out on my palette. Moved it around a little bit so I could get a little bit of mixture of color and then zapped that section. Now, I don't tend to heat set things any more than absolutely necessary, but a little something like this, just doing a quick little part doesn't tend to cause the kind of, I guess, burning of the color. Because sometimes you get some color change because of the heat and I don't tend to like that all the time. So I stay away if I can from doing too much in terms of heat setting and uh, drying my paint that way. I wanted the bottom to be darker, so I'm going to put another coat of that on there while my little octopuses and squid dudes are drying. And that's going to give me some more contrast in both the corals that are sticking up out of the ground as well as the corals down on the bottom of the ocean. And the white eyeballs inside of those <laughs> portholes just make me grin. Oh my goodness. I actually had to text this to Ellen because I had told her I had an idea for this stamp set. And this came out even cuter than when I told her that I, I had this weird idea. So it was kind of fun to be able to 
to share this vision with her because she never knows what I'm going to come up with her, with her stamp sets. Usually I, as you know, I do all kinds of weird things that no one else in their right mind would do. So there you go. I did decide since I had all that dark color down there at the bottom, I wanted to add a little bit more darkness onto the submarine. And so I did and then mounted it onto some black cardstock and popped that layer onto a black card base and then took some glossy accents to add onto the bubbles as well as onto the little portholes so the little guys would really stand out. I think they really do with their big white eyes and the totally different bright blue color. And I just got a kick out of this card. I love it when a card makes me laugh because I know that it's going to make the recipient laugh too. But it's all about keeping each other happy, isn't it? All right, thanks so much for visiting my video today. There's more on the blog, links to all the new releases. And if I get time to make any more cards with the rest of the release, they'll be on the blog. And I will see you guys later. Take care and have an awesome day. Bye-bye.